Good morning. Please be seated. Welcome to Trinity Sunday. What we sometimes refer to as the green season, ordinary time, or as we more commonly call it now, the season after Pentecost. This is the one day in the church calendar year that we look at the Trinity specifically and not just as part of our text for the day. The Gospel today is a perfect example of how we pull together the one in three and the three in one. In the beginning of the reading, there is a conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus in verse 5. We are told by Jesus, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without the form of the water and the spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. There is also the reference to the wind blowing, and not knowing where it comes from or where it goes. The spirit is not a physical, tangible being, but one that comes upon one for a purpose, as the wind drops a seed to grow in the soul, but then moves on in its own time. Later, Jesus is very direct about who he is in verse 13. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Woven into this gospel, as I see, a key character, and that is Nicodemus. Here is a Pharisee, a Jewish leader and teacher, who with his own spirit knows that Jesus is no ordinary prophet, but someone who is close to God. Conflicted because of his Jewish teaching, but is compelled to seek Jesus out and talk with him. He must come to Jesus the dark, doubt, and fear, those who do not understand and who will lack out at those who threaten their own thoughts. Nicodemus is alive and well in many people today, a person who wants to believe but who has doubts about who Jesus, God, and the Spirit really are, and do they really exist. Our world is becoming even more secular as time goes on. And so those who are in doubt live and move in the dark, afraid of being persecuted when God is brought up amongst various groups or individuals. Even for those who are outward Christians, we may have to be careful and pick and choose when to bring our faith into conversation. <coughs> Nicodemus is a triad in his own right. After all, he first comes to Jesus in the night and gains enough faith in who Jesus is to later come forward and ask that Jesus be given a fair trial when the temple hierarchy was planning on a plot against Jesus. And later, with even stronger conviction, as he joins with Joseph of Arathamea to ask for the body of Jesus so that they can bury him. At this point, there really can be no question about Nicodemus, who came in the night of doubt but buries Jesus in the light of day for all to see. We have no idea after this as to what became and befell Nicodemus. He is just one more breeze that came and went in the gospel stories. As I mentioned earlier, we live in an ever-changing and more secular world. So how do you explain the Trinity? I ask, how would you explain the Trinity to Nicodemus? The big question of how can God be one personality, Jesus another, and even the Spirit another, and still be one entity. This is what I like to call signatures. When you sign a contract, your signature represents you. It's not you physically, but for all the world, it represents you. It is binding and final. If you burn the contract, the signature is gone, and in practicality, it does not exist any longer. I can't make this point strong enough because all these examples, these signatures I call them and talk about, will have an end. Understand that God and the Trinity are a great mystery, and if there was a solid explanation or example, there would be no ministry and mystery, therefore, no God. God is the great mystery that we live and search for. My first signature is a tree. You can look at God the Father as the roots which ground the tree in place and are not seen. 
God the Son is the trunk and branches, that part of God that is there for all to see and grow even taller, to give shade and comfort and a home to all creatures from where all the branches of Christianity grow. The leaves of the tree are the Holy Spirit. The leaves spring forth, and the seeds of the Spirit are caught on the wind to bring new life to where they fall. You say that leaves die, and yes, you're right. But look closely at the branches as new buds appear for a spring, a new generation, always renewing itself. It is no surprise that in the Genesis, in the garden, there was a tree of life. No one part can exist without the other, and they are all joined as one, but each part is different. But the sap runs both up and down from leaf to root as one entity. That is one common to all three parts. For those of a more scientific nature, let's look at the periodic chart of elements. I don't have to have one with me, but if you look at it, the hydrogen atom is the first on the entire list above all others. A neutron, a proton, God the Father, and God the Son. Whirling around it is the electron of the Holy Spirit. That electron is the part of the Spirit that joins to make other molecules. All living things are made up of hydrocarbons. Those are the building blocks of life. The best example of a hydrogen combination is water, or as its chemical reference, H2O. Two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen joined together by the electron. Life does not exist without water, and we do not live without water of baptism. These again are only three examples, and there are others. Now my challenge to you today, when you believe, is to go out and find a Trinity signature out there, and you will find one if you look. Nature and the world are full of them. They are given to us so that we can find them, and each of us one that will find it our own special signature. <coughs> I have one other closing note for today. And just as we looked at the tree, and we felt the life of the tree, it's time to look to a different view. We look to say and do what is right and proper when we express <coughs> ourselves. Language is never changing reality, but sometimes the change loses something. A book of common prayer is actually written to express what needs to be said. But does the grammar always portray the feeling? The Glory Patrick is, is an example of this. It is written to read, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It is written correctly, but does it have the full feeling of the Trinity as three equal parts of the same entity? Let me rewrite it a little differently for you. And please note the change. Glory to the Father, and glory to the Son, and glory to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever as one. I hope you feel the same as I do about giving a better feel of the Trinity, especially on the Sunday of the Trinity. So I ask that you all go out and look for your own little signature Trinity. Thank you. Amen. Amen.